Thanks. Thanks a lot, Megan. So we have two questions. The first one is from Philip to Omar. Philip, are you there? Yes, I am. Uh, uh, hi. No, no. It was just a, uh, a question. I, uh, Omar, I remember from from the last discussion a, a while ago. Um, can you see me? Yeah. <laughs> I, I can't yet. Uh, hmm? can't see you yet ah there you are okay so uh so the question was was more uh to, to uh i mean i understand uh, from your presentation of the difficulty and constraint and i think uh, this is a very very important step as uh, this um posting tool uh, because that would feed into uh, uh, you know a better identification of uh, wash uh, wash needs and that will link also to the ability of uh, uh, you know having a more uh, targeted and more um, uh, more leverage for advocacy for wash. Uh, could you remind us uh, uh, you know how the the cholera hotspot were prioritized on uh, you know using which methodology and uh, uh, you know I mean as you know in, in different. Uh, uh, context, uh, the level of hotspot could be kind, kind of different. Could you could you just can uh, you know update us on on what was the methodology that was used for for identifying identifying this hotspot? Thanks. Thank you very much, Philippe. Uh, we are currently debating this with CDC. There are several ways proposed to prioritize um, the hotspots. Uh, some include, of course, the EPI data. This is a very clear cut. The service levels, how are they, uh, what step are we on the wash ladders um, per the SDG uh, ladders definition. Uh, the way it was done, in, and, and, and this is the ongoing uh, conversation with CDC, and that's mm -hmm. why I had mentioned that there are some concerns. The way it was prioritized in, in the uh, original costing tool was only based on the epi data. And we felt it needs to come into combination with something else since we need to have a wash fo focus. Epi data is not gonna disappear, certainly not, but it has to come. There are several parameters that need to feature in, in the prioritization exercise. And we would very um, much welcome your thoughts on that, Philippe. Thank you. Okay. Most welcome. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. So the next question is from Alex to Tom Hensel. Yes, I think Tom, I, I brought it in the chat. I, I don't know if it was clear. And I, I like when you size sample size, I link always to budget and totally agree <laughs> with it, right? So my question was more on, on, on how much can we reduce this sample size, right? Because we always have limitation. There is not only one hotspot, right? And if we are doing sample size, we will run out of money for sure. <laughs> and we will invest all in, 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 in doing questionnaires. So if there can be a minimum uh, sample size that we can take the decision on which hotspot we will really you know target which are the ones that we will prioritize for for wash interventions in a whole country and as well on the secondary data i will be interesting as well to know if we could validate some of the data that it's already existing in these countries from other organizations who unicef i don't know but there are organizations already that have this wash data right and 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 how much we could use this data instead of reviewing baseline studies. Thank you. Yeah, thanks. I, was, I appreciate the question. I, I should have mentioned that last part that you brought up about existing data, because this is the, uh, this should really be part one of this whole exercise. So if our assumption is, if there is existing data from various other surveys that cover the hotspots of interest, we should use that data whenever it's available. So we, do, we would do the baseline if that data is either old or it doesn't correspond to the specific hotspot. So there might be uh, JMP data that's pulled from five years ago, eight years ago, or it might not just correspond to the particular area that's defined as a hotspot. And that makes it 
problematic. And it might be, we've, in previous uh, webinars, we've talked about, can we model, or I think IHE is doing this modeling from areas that are close to the hotspot and give an estimate of what the wash conditions are in the hotspot. If that works out, that would be, that would be easier. Um, but our assumption is in some hotspots, we're not gonna have that level of data or it's gonna be older and we need to do some kind of uh, new data collection. And so we propose the easiest way to do this is if we can piggyback on an OCV coverage survey because there's already funds available for the OCV survey. We can add in wash questions in, in, with minimal amount of extra funds, at least collect that data. And then if we want to oversample, we then we'd have to add in additional funds to increase the sample size for, for uh, specific areas of wash interest. I think in terms of the size, yes, in, this, in the sample size that I showed you, we kind of did it uh, worst case scenario. So you have to make some assumptions on what the wash level of wash is in the area. So we, always, we use an assumption that it's the uh, at 50 percent, so that gives us the highest sample size. In, in reality, it might be lower than that. So um, we're using those numbers, and then when we do a few of these, we'll find out if it's if it's small or not. But the other question is, what what's the purpose of doing the the assessment? If it's if you want to just prioritize hotspot A versus B uh, or C, and you just need some, you might be able to use a smaller sample size to do that. But if you're going to monitor over time, and you want to good estimates that you can show progress, then I, you need a more precise estimate. And you, I, I think it's worth the investment to do a, a, a one that gives you a little bit better um, precision around what levels of coverage you have at the beginning. And that, that takes a, a larger sample size. So it, it can be modified. And that's something that we need to try and see what's the minimal level to give actionable information. And can we re simplify the methods and reduce the size? Um, but I don't, I don't want to say that we should just do the, the smallest amount necessary because then we'll get in a trap where we're collecting data, but then we wish we had better data two years from now when we want to compare it uh, uh, with a baseline. So um, we'll, we'll have better information once we try these in a few locations. And I think we wanted to work with IFRC on this in some locations and try uh, different ways of doing this and see if we can you know, refine the method for, for different scenarios, urban and rural, et cetera. So I, I hope that partially answers your, your question. Yes, yeah, thanks, very clear. Great, thank you. So then we have two questions for Francis and Malika regarding OCVN wash in Tigre. The first one is from Christophe. Please go ahead. Yes, um, in, in fact, the question is uh, not, really only for uh, Malika and Francis, it's for uh, everyone and, you know, the thinking around what we need to do in WASH and OCV. Uh, I think it's, WASH is very important, of course, in the response, uh, but it goes also beyond WASH items distribution. So, um, of course, we shouldn't just dump WASH intervention because we are doing um, OCV campaigns. Uh, but also, I think OCV campaigns may have their own constraints on timing, funding, implementation, and, and preparation. And um, maybe it's difficult to add uh, uh, this, uh, this uh, uh, wash item distribution element on top of it. And it, so I'm just um, uh, asking out loud, uh, have we really thought about what would be the real added value of uh, combining this uh, wash item distribution, for example, with, uh, with OCV campaigns, or uh, could it be a separate uh, uh, stream? In fact, we, we could still uh, think of what to do in wash in emergency in, in those uh, areas that are being given uh, OCV campaigns, but maybe it's not, uh, uh, the, the, the best element to combine uh, uh, wash item distribution with OCD campaigns. So just uh, thinking out loud. Yeah, it's a good point, uh, Christophe, actually, that, uh, that you raised in the monitoring and evaluation that uh, we presented. It's true that we focus on the on the intervention itself, to monitor the intervention itself, if it happened, if it did not happen. 
The aim of that, um, to use uh, this wash distribution and um, uh, hygiene promotion during emergency, it to, is to start a long-term uh, wash intervention in the, in the future. So it's not to, to see if there is uh, an added value to wash to OCV or, or, or that kind of thing. It's really to start, the aim of this project was initially to start a long-term project of WASH where we think that because there is an outbreak and because we will know that the OCV will uh, offer an opportunity to go house to house and to be very close to the, the, the community uh, to, to start a long-term long project of, uh, of WASH activities. But uh, I agree that it would be also uh, good uh, to, to document uh, more uh, on that if there is uh, somehow an, an impact. Uh, but there are some studies, I think, in, in DRC uh, that uh, evaluate the WASH impact of this and OCV and things like that. But really, uh, what, uh, what initiates that was uh, to start uh, long-term uh, WASH activities. Uh, but this is something we can uh, think about on a better, maybe, um, look at the, the impact of those uh, interventions in the future. Okay, Christoph is happy. So we can move to Albert, who has a second question. Great, thanks, Justine. Uh, Malika and Francis, my question was uh, just to understand how the WASH NFI distributions in Tigre were coordinated with the OCV campaign so that families that were vaccinated received the complimentary WASH package. Second part, I, I assume that due to the situation and the shift in Tigre particularly, there hasn't been any monitoring of the, the use of those, um, the WASH package. But wondering if they were. Francis, you were here more before me. You want to answer that, and for monitoring, I can answer. Okay, um, uh, let, let me try to, 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 to respond to that. Um, first of all, I mean, I have to admit that integrity it has been a challenge. We had to uh, rely on the um, uh, regional health of Europe, um to tell us, or even to, uh, to, to, to say which, which families would receive, first of all, we did not have all the equipment. That's one thing. Um, uh, now we had to, to work with them, uh, especially the wash uh, from the uh, regional health bureau, at least to, to see which families we could, uh, we could give. Because as I mentioned in, my, in the presentation, there's been already some distribution that had been going on. Uh, before the OCV uh, uh, campaign. So what they had was they, they, had, they knew which families, for example, received already some of the items uh, and uh, we were told which families to, uh, to receive during the OCV. So this was coordinated with the authorities who uh, um, sort of guided as to which families uh, were still uh, lacking some of the things. From one of the slides, you also see that in one of the Wereda or the uh, district, uh, there was no distribution of soap or jerry cans, but only aqua taps because the other items were already distributed before. But this was, I mean, I, as I said, I admit this was so difficult with the timing and there was no time for um, uh, those, to verify all the information because, as I mentioned, the security uh, situation did not allow uh, staff to go out there to, to, to verify and to assess all these kind of things. But I trust that families uh, we were given by the authorities with that we, we are distributed. The thing is, uh, the items were sent to where the OCV was being distributed. So uh, there was OCV at the same time, there was the uh, wash and NFA, uh, NFI uh, equipment uh, next. Um, 
normally, normally, I'm saying normally because uh, probably some of the places were not there to, to, to verify, but normally it was distributed by family. So one of the head of the family, uh, and we consider a family uh, as having five members. That's why uh, it was like one jerry can per family plus one bar of soap or uh, five tablets of soap, this kind of things. But again, it was uh, with the help from the uh, authorities, the RHP. I don't know if I've uh, answered part of your question. Thank you. Marika could probably compliment on that. Yes, and on the, the monitoring and evaluation, uh, we really have to highlight that uh, that happened uh, during the Tigray uh, really crisis when the TPLF entered the, to control of the Tigray region and a lot of uh, security issue um, happening at that time. So right after the end of the, the, the first round. So we couldn't implement uh, any monitoring and evaluation. Uh, still now, the second round is not uh, implemented. There was no communication. We were 90% uh, of the staff was uh, evacuated. Uh, so, uh, but I, I really want to highlight that despite all these difficulties, despite all, all that, this could happen. We could really uh, combine uh, a campaign with some wash uh, distribution, and we have a lot of uh, lesson learned uh, that will be uh, very useful for the, the next, uh, next time. We would not uh, have bet on implementing that in, a, in the Tigray in a such difficult um, setting. Uh, so yes, so it will be difficult, difficult. We are still planning to do the second round before December, and we are still working on the next distribution with the team uh, there on, on the ground uh, and trying to do uh, better. I Thanks. think Philippe has... Uh, yes, exactly. Uh, Philippe and Francis, so maybe you can all come up with your videos. Chef? Sorry, sorry, uh, I'm struggling with a button. Okay, so no, no, ju just uh, um, a quick, uh, a quick comment. I think it, what is very, very important also it's to remind, uh, to remember what was the context, and that you know initially the idea of the pilot was the, you know in the perfect world, uh, ideal world, what we would have preferred is to have a smaller. Uh, pilot and in a place where it's a little bit easier. But um, the, the, the context in which uh, this was done was an extremely uh, difficult context uh, mentioned by Manish, Mal Malika and Francis, uh, you know, due to civil war with a lot of difficulty, but also that was fed by the extremely, extremely poor wash situation in the area. Uh, uh, so where uh, people had uh, less than one water, uh, one liter of water per day, and uh, you know there was something like uh, you know thousands and thousands of people by latrines in the refugee camps. Okay, so and that in a situation of uh, an acute civil war that uh, has uh, you know further deteriorated that that's prevented the uh, the. Uh, uh, you know the, the implementation of the second round and the monitoring of the survey. So, so that was known. Uh, I would say from the begin from the beginning. So we we knew that there was going to be a lot of challenge. But uh, you know, it's uh, it's not just a, a statement. But at least we try to do it. You know, the no regret policy. That was an opportunity. Uh, people were in desperate need, and I think it was important to start. So, uh, as Malika said, I'm not going to comment on that, and I really want to use this opportunity to really thank Malika and Francis for the, ex the job that they did in the field for that, and that were in a very, very difficult condition. But uh, despite all the limitations, this, I think, has been a very useful uh, uh, exercise uh, for, for first, uh, I mean, at least for the people that were targeted, maybe not for all, but at least they got access to, uh, uh, to something that improved their, uh, you know, that solved uh, immediate problems, uh, or part of it at least, but also in terms of lesson learned for the future. And just also to conclude on that issue from my side, it's also the fact that 
the intention is not necessary to um, uh, to implement this kind of activity with all the emergency campaign. All the outbreak are different, and the situation is different. So it's not that uh, you know the idea would be to distribute uh, you know uh, soap and uh, uh, an aqua tab and uh, and jerry cans uh, every time we have a vaccination campaign. But in this situation. Uh, like in uh, in Afghanistan, where again, I mean, among the people that were targeted for the vaccination, two million, this intervention was targeted on the one million IDP that were identified at this time. So people that had to leave their house in an emergency with basically nothing, and where the local population was not able to cover for that. So again, this is a very, very difficult context. So it's not something that uh, as GTFCC or, or even WHO we will recommend in all settings, but I think it's important to continue building on that to be ready for the next similar kind of crisis where this kind of intervention will be useful. Nice to there. Over to you, uh, Justine. Francis, you had uh, raised your hand. Uh, yes, yes. Uh, I wanted to drop it, but because I mean, I think Philip touched to the point that I wanted to, 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 to mention. Uh, that was just like, a, an addition to Christoph Valingo's uh, um, question as to looking at uh, the budget or the logistics conference. It is, I don't think it's, it's, it's a question of money. Uh, that's, that's one thing. Uh, but also I think the uh, logistically is possible only that the challenges that we had in Tigre were a little bit uh, uh, specific, uh, but that has not to be uh, regarded as um, or will be like that. I think for me, the distribution of OCV, uh, the integration OCV and the WASH in I think integrate, especially, and I, I mentioned that we tried to target the IDBs as Philip mentioned, that was the message uh, to relate the cholera and the WASH part. Okay, so uh, even during the distribution, people tried at least to pass this message why there was distribution of jerry cans or aqua taps uh, during this round. So that, that's the relation to say, okay, OCV is to try to, you know, to, to limit the uh, cholera, but also the wash. We know that cholera is somehow ready to wash, wash problems. So that was the, for me, the message to, to the people, especially to the IDPs, because as Mr. Fid mentioned, they were moving from probably where they had access to water or whatever, and next, if they bomb or whatever, next morning they will move or not to move to another place where they have nothing. So they had to have at least some um, basic package to, to support them. Thank you. We have a last question from Tom Hansel before we go for a small break. Yeah, sorry, it's not a, a question. It was actually a, a comment on, on that. Let me start my video, sorry. So, so I, I think this is a, a great example of showing proof of concept that, it, that the two can be combined. I, I think the question we need to resolve is when we should do this. So it's, it shouldn't, in my opinion, it shouldn't be a standard option. There'll be times when it makes sense to do so and times when it doesn't make, and we need some criteria to do so. So one would be for me, if there's an outbreak ongoing now and we're gonna do an OCD campaign, but it's gonna take some days for the immunity to, to uh, uh, take place in, in, in individuals, having short-term wash interventions will provide safe drinking water improved hygiene over a short period of time. Um, but providing you know, two weeks or a month of aqua tabs is not gonna have a long-term impact on, on uh, cholera transmission um, in the absence of, of OCV. So I, I think there are certain times when it makes sense to do it in an emergency campaign. As a preventative measure or in the second round of a campaign, they've already been provided OCV, they've already got some level of protection giving out more aqua tabs is a nice gesture, but I don't think it's gonna have any impact really on transmission of cholera. Um, I, I would say the other option might be when the wash sector wants to get out NFIs, but is having difficulty organizing that, taking advantage of an OCV campaign that's going out to reach all these households, let's piggyback on that and, and get those supplies out anyway, uh, then it makes sense. So I guess my point is it'd be nice to have, as we go forward, develop some criteria when you would combine and when you wouldn't. Thanks. 
Okay, great. So now I would suggest we use that time that we have maybe for an open discussion on any of those activities. Please just raise your hand if you want to, to address one specific topic. Omar? Yeah, thank you very much, Justine. It's just, you know, I know that with each and every OCB application, there is some sort of a commitment by the respective governments to fortify, to, to work on WASH in order to address the root causes. And I've raised that previously and I reiterate the ask again, what do we do in order to hold respective governments to account if we receive an OCV application for country X, I'm not gonna name names, two years ago and it was put through and there are clear commitments on from the government to work on these areas of wash. And then three years down the line, we received the same OCV application, perhaps even for the same location. What do we do to hold respective governments to account? It's not, I'm, I'm not here thinking about the price of the vaccine. That's not what I'm concerned, I'm not talking about. What I'm talking about is the well being, is, is the life and the health of the people. Um, and, and perhaps it, it may be worth considering because now we're talking about WASH interventions that are many times linked to development to find linkages with the sanitation and water for all initiative in order to bring in this advocacy to try and hold people to account. This needs to happen. OCV is is in a way, you know, a cheap undertaking, if, if I may, with all due respect, of course, a very effective undertaking, but it's not the solution. I think it, it's really important to stop those, you know, painkillers and address the root causes. Uh, thank you and back to Justin. So I think I'll, I'll start answering to this and I'll let Malika jump in if she wants to. Uh, of course, OCV is not the perfect solution. Uh, it's not a long-term solution, but it saves lives. It's also part of our mandate uh, to avoid unnecessary death. Um, and we do indeed have to consolidate our integration of OCV and WASH, not only in the field, but in the terms in terms of how we plan our activities. We need to rethink uh, how to integrate WASH in the OCB requests to have it better structured, to know what needs to be done immediately, what are some mid-term and longer-term objectives. Only long-term WASH will provide uh, safety from, from cholera, but we all know that this is a story of probably, probably will be retired by then. Um, so we need to rethink this. This is on our work plan. We would be more than happy to have you on board for the discussion, Omar. Um, then in terms of, of um, putting more pressure on, on states to be accountable for their promises for WASH and for general development of their infrastructures, of course, it will require additional partners. We already had the idea to contact SWA. It's their core uh, work, what they do to push for SDG 6 internationally. Christina and her team are doing excellent work. So of course we need to, to address this and I'm sure Megan would be more than happy to have your views also uh, on how advocacy could be pushed for WASH, uh, but also for uh, cholera eradication. Uh, Malika, do you want to add something? Yes, uh, thanks a lot, Omar. Omar, I think it's absolutely totally right, a good point that uh, you raised. Uh, when we receive a request for preventive uh, campaign, uh, the, the country submit a plan of WASH activities that they have to implement. But it's true that we never uh, assess uh, what was done in terms of WASH. Uh, never. We ask the coverage survey. We, we ask that kind of stuff. Also, although we try to to, to be uh, better on that. Now we receive multi-year uh, requests. We are working on having plan for multi-year requests. And I think it will be uh, important uh, after one year, when the, the country finish the, the, the first year 
of um, the, the number of doses that they, they requested is really before we, we send the, the, the next shipment is really to have and to push to have more um, evidence of what was done uh, during, uh, in terms of, uh, of WASH. So this is something that we really need to include now in the multi-year uh, request uh, for, for, for OCV. Over. Alex, you wanted to add something? Unfortunately, she couldn't attend today because she has another meeting, but our colleague, uh, Kate Alberti, I think is finalizing a draft uh, uh, capacity development strategy for the GTFCC. That will be a place where we can anchor our work uh, in terms of cholera wash for capacity development and training. And the same goes for RCC. I mean, Kate is also leading the formation now of this new working group for community engagement and we will need not only to split tasks but ensure that the, the, the good linkages are done between the work they do and what we do so well noted and of course we will uh, we will remember that so i think now i can hand over to megan who will give us a summary of what has been discussed very briefly Okay, so um, as Justine mentioned, we've got our ex five existing work streams here, um, OCB, data, NCPs, research and advocacy, and I tried to capture the names um, as we went along, but I think we need to look back at the recording um, to fill this in more properly, um, but just to get a sense there that there seems to be interest from the group to, to continue working on at least four of these, perhaps five, these five, five work streams. Um, and from the Mentimeter and the current discussions, the three new work streams that had the most interest was wash capacity, the case studies and hygiene, and a number of volunteers to take that work forward, um, and water safety planning and wash at IPC as lower priorities, but um, a number of names here as well as so a suggestion those are probably going to be priorities as well. So, um, just trying to capture some of the notes from the discussion, um, particularly what Alex said around making sure that even if we form these sub working groups, how do we um, ensure we're connected across the whole working group? And um, I think Justine's going to share as well that we hoping to have a WASH working group next year in March, that would be a great opportunity for us all to come together in person. Um, but yes, I think as these working groups uh, form, it'd be good for us to come together and share across, uh, across the different working groups. And so the idea now is for um, people who are interested in those particular groups to set up um, a meeting, um, a call with the other interested participants to, to further develop those streams and particularly what we want to prioritize in the year ahead. Um, and yeah, I didn't get very far, as you can see on the last slide, um, but thanks to the support of Foundation Mario, who will um, support us with the meeting report, we'll be able to share that out along with a more detailed summary of the working groups and the particular names in each. Um, and then from that, we'd be really keen to have a volunteer to lead that sub working group and, and have that initial conversation with other members of the working group to really take the, take the work forward. So I think that's all I'll say for now. Justine, I'll hand back to you. Thank you. Thank you, Megan. Yes, that's right. Now we will uh, probably just close the meeting and, and reconvene with WaterAid to decide on, on the way ahead. The idea we had initially was that we continue in sub-working groups of volunteers to work on those topics, maybe in the coming one month or two, just to draft the vision uh, and what would be required in terms of effort, in terms of budget, what kind of, of uh, consultants we would need, and so on. The idea is to have a draft plan for 22 by the end of the year, as it's usually done. And hopefully uh, by March, we will be able to have a proper in-person meeting uh, at Fondation Merieux. We will know that, uh, of course, only a little bit before. We have learned that long-term planning with COVID is something that is a little bit stupid to do, but we will try. So I think the only uh, final remark uh, that there is is that please, please uh, provide us with your feedback on the evaluation uh, of this uh, meeting. 
And now I will give the floor to Philippe Barboza, our team lead. 